All right, folks. So one of the things we've been talking about is waste management, not waste management, the company, but waste management, the general concept, the, the broad idea of what do we do with our waste. Now, we've also been talking about plastics, but, uh, you know, we can't really look at the whole big picture of the ocean until we've done, we, we've talked about human waste, right? So now that we have talked about that here in unit eight, let's go ahead and kind of zoom back and then take a look at the whole big picture of the ocean. Now, one of the things that you need to know is we, we kind of broke the ocean and here's all the stuff we did, okay? So we'll start with all the way back, as far back as, as agriculture. Uh, let's take a look at overfishing. So we did talk about overfishing and the, the depletion of fish stocks all over the globe in every ocean, the Pacific, the Atlantic, everywhere. So three quarters of the globe, we're reducing fish populations with overfishing. Now, the kind of the cure for that is aquaculture, right? But aquaculture can be good or bad depending on how it's done. Now, the past with aquaculture, particularly with inshore aquaculture, that is aquaculture that is done in the ocean, but very, very close to the mouths of rivers and the intertidal zone, very close to the shore. Now, that has been done poorly in years past. There are new things, there are new methods, new technologies and new systems that are being used to where Aquaculture can be very, very good and have much less impact on the ocean. However, aqua, aquaculture can still pollute uh, with invasive exotic species, with parasite loading, with huge amounts of excess food that becomes waste and decomposes and, and causes that eutrophication and hypoxia, uh, as well as fish waste, right? Of course, invasive exotic species, all the way back to the very beginning of the year, we were talking about ecology. We looked at a lot of invasive exotic species, just to, just to name a few, right here in the Gulf of Mexico, right next to Texas, the you know lionfish coming in, tiger prawns coming in, and all sorts of other invasive exotics that are in the ocean. You, you, you often think about you know fire ants, wild hogs, that sort of thing that are terrestrial, but even in the oceans, we have major, major invasive exotics problems. We also talked about coral reefs, the importance of coral reefs just in the climate itself as a giant carbon sink, but we also talked about them being diversity hotspots and how important they are for global diversity, uh, for fish populations all over the world, as well as regulating our climate through absorbing carbon dioxide from the ocean. Now, coral reefs are dying at an alarming rate, okay? So as good as they are, they're leaving. And when we took a look at the Super Coral Project, you know, there are ways to try to cure that ill However, it's very much a disease in the ocean is the loss of coral reefs. We also talked about estuaries and their importance in uh, filtering water and being nursery grounds for a lot of our fish populations, sport fish, commercial fish, all sorts of things and how important estuaries are and how we are losing estuaries for all sorts of reasons, shoreline erosion, uh, coastal development, all sorts of things that are, that are threatening estuaries. So we talked about all that in the beginning of the year. And then in this unit, all the way on the, toward the end of the year, we've talked about the growing plastics problem in the ocean. And so I'll let you look at uh, you know, the, the pieces in canvas that go over the, the Pacific plastic dump. There's a few other things that we haven't talked about though, and this is what I'm gonna get into is relatively new information. Ocean warming. So you probably remember from chemistry that water has a high specific heat and water soaks in heat and holds on to it, right? So of course, that's going to be a giant heat sink of the world, but the ocean is getting hotter. And one of the reasons is because ice is melting. Ice has a property called albedo, which is a reflective property of ice. It's white, right? Like ice is clear, but you know, sea ice is white. It's usually covered in snow, and so it's nice, this nice, bright, bright, white, reflective covering. Now, sea ice is supposed to reflect a huge percentage of solar radiation coming from space, right? And that reflects out, and the Earth stays cold. The frozen uh, seas, the, the cold seas are supposed to stay cold, and that uh, whole ecology is based on this water temperature and the chemical reactions that happen there and all those things. Now, as we lose sea ice because of global climate change, then we're losing the albedo, the reflective property, right? So that deep, dark water is soaking in heat. Even though it appears to be what you would call cold, that water is getting warmer than it is ever supposed to have been, okay? And because we're, we're losing the albedo. So 
the, the sea is soaking in more heat than it should because of the loss of sea ice. That does a couple of things. It leads to thermal expansion of the sea, and I'll get to that in a second. But the other thing that it does is that prevents new ice from forming and continues to reduce more ice. So the atmosphere itself is reducing sea ice, but as that sea ice reduces the, and the albedo is lost the ocean getting warmer is also reducing the amount of sea ice. So it's a, an issue coming from two different angles. As, as this ocean warms now. And that, that leads to a positive feedback loop, right? Where it's like a snowball effect. One thing leads to another, makes it worse, makes it worse, makes it worse. It's that, that domino effect, right? Where you flick one and then it spirals out of control. The next thing we're gonna look at is ocean acidification. This is, um, it, you know, it seems like a contradictory in terms because the ocean, because of all the salt, is supposed to be basic. By basic, you know, so we, you learn from chemistry that a base um, is anything on the pH scale from seven to 14 is that the ocean's supposed to run around eight, eight and a half, something like that. It's supposed to be basic. Now it's becoming more neutral, like seven. And what we really don't wanna see is seawater becoming less than seven or acidic. So here's why ocean acidification is happening. One of the first ones is the formation of H2CO3 carbonic acid. Everywhere that this, the sea and the air meet, then you have a reaction between carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and water in the sea. So CO2 and H2O combine and produce H2CO3 carbonic acid. As CO2 goes up, so like, like what you learned in chemistry is the, the amount of the reagent goes up, the reaction, the product goes up, right? So if we increase CO2, the amount of H2CO3 being formed on three quarters of the globe goes up. And then even on the rest of the globe, then that is continuing. There, there's more carbonic acid being formed in rivers as well. And of course, that all runs into the ocean, right? Now, the agricultural sector gives us some, some acid problems as well. You get ammonia and nitric acid, NH4 and HNO3. These are all nitrogen-based acids. And a lot of that comes from agriculture, from animal feces, from uh, largely from industrial fertilizers that end up running off into the ocean, and those are releasing hydrogen ions, H plus ions. And remember that that is the definition of an acid, right? Is anything that produces H plus ions in solution. So if we have all these nitrogen and hydrogen compounds in the ocean, then H plus ions are gonna be released and the pH is going to drop. Furthermore, leachate can make its way to the ocean. Leachate is formed uh, when water runs through human waste, through garbage and is uh, either gonna end up in the groundwater or it's gonna end up in surface waters and gonna run off. Even if it ends up in groundwater, when we put, pull groundwater up and we use it for other human activities, eventually that, that's gonna run off, right? So we can get acids from everything from batteries to rotten cheeseburgers and sodas and stuff. And e-waste. E-waste is discussed in this unit. And uh, you know, largely e-waste is from electronics, right? So TVs, cell phones, computers, that sort of thing. Uh, any kind of electronic device that's being broken down. And a lot of times, uh, e-waste is being broken down very, very close to the sea. Because e-waste is taken from developed or post-industrial nations, is taken to developing, or what, what we used to call third world nations, is literally taken to the coast and just dumped. And then people dig through that garbage, that e-waste, and then start trying to break it down, burn it down. They, they use acids to try to melt the uh, plastic off of the wires so they can get to the wires and things like that. Those industrial acids, everything from batteries to sulfuric acid that's used to melt the plastic off the wires, a lot of that ends up in the ocean. So ocean acidification is a, is a multifaceted problem. This is the easiest one. This is the, the hardest one to take a look at because it really has to do directly with human activities. This is sort of secondary to the human activity of burning fossil fuels. The other issue we have is that the sea is getting deeper. Now we're gonna look at this in unit seven, but sea level rise, the fact that the ocean is getting deeper, sea level is rising. And we know that, that's absolutely proven. It's really a two-stage process. We have thermal expansion. If you guys have ever made ramen noodles, you know that it, when you boil water, then that water expands. That's why you don't fill the pot all the way up to the top, because if you got it hot, it would boil over, right? When you get something hot, it expands, particularly water. 
it expands. And so as the ocean warms, then it is going to expand. That causes thermal expansion. Now we also have melting of continental ice. Continental ice being that ice that is on the land that because of global climate change, then that is melting and running off into the sea. Don't think of melting ice as icebergs, floating ice or sea ice. That does not affect sea level. The same way that you get like a soda from Sonic over here and the ice in it melts, it doesn't just run out all over the place. However, if I was to take your soda from Sonic, take the top off and pour water on it, then it would overflow the cup, which is what's happening in the ocean is that continental ice, ice on the land is melting and running off into the sea and that is causing it to rise. And it's also affecting ocean acidification because the water that is melting and running off into the sea is usually neutral or even sometimes slightly acidic because ice has got air in it, which is gonna have CO2 in it, and then carbonic acid is gonna naturally form. So the water running off is not just deepening the sea, it's also affecting the pH of the sea because it's either neutral or slightly acidic.